Welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Grace Egan, Executive Director of the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging to provide information and resources to boomers, caregivers, and seniors. Today we're going to talk about some housing and money management issues. The New Jersey Foundation for Aging has explored the cost of seniors living in New Jersey in several reports. From these, we've learned that more than 250,000 seniors who are single or living in elder couples households over age 65 are not able to cover their basic living expenses, which include housing, food, transportation, and health care. With one million persons over age 65 in New Jersey, this means that 25 percent of New Jersey elders are either living in poverty or on the edge of poverty. The New Jersey Index, which can be found on our website, also tells us that 22 percent of New Jersey seniors with a mortgage will pay twice as much as elders who have paid off their mortgages. 25 percent of New Jersey elders are also renters, and 53 percent of New Jersey elders have already paid off their mortgages. If someone is a single renter, they will pay more than 46 percent of their expenses just for their housing needs. But if someone has a mortgage, their cost for housing is about 60 percent of their total expenses. So today we want to talk about solutions and resources for seniors who have a credit and debt questions. So I'm very pleased to be joined today by Kimberly Cole, Education Outreach Coordinator at Nova Debt, and Maureen Rodriguez, a Certified Housing Counselor from Nova Debt. Thank you for being here today. I'm very Thank pleased you. that you're here. And Kim has helped us in the past with an Elder Economic Summit where we wanted senior services, our county offices on aging and other community services to be linked with credit and debt and foreclosure um, prevention programs. So um, I'm very pleased that you're here today. But why don't you tell us a little bit about Nova Debt and what Nova Debt, how it started and what it really is set up to do. Sure. Uh, Nova Debt has been in business since 1991. We are a um, kind of full service financial management organization. And what that basically means is that uh, we offer a number of different services towards financial counseling, including budget counseling, credit counseling, and of course what we're seeing a uh, large number of is housing counseling. For people of all ages. People of all ages, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. And um, all of our counseling services are free of charge, so anyone can give us a call and speak to a counselor and uh, hopefully get the answers that they need to their questions. And so since today we're really talking about older workers, people over age 55, and people that are over 62, I really want to focus on the services that you and Maureen as a housing counselor are able to provide. Um, do you see um, a rise in foreclosures? I know there seem to be a, a slower um, building of foreclosures yes. that in the beginning in 2009 we didn't have a sense that seniors were really being um, hit hard, but I think given the economic downturn and given the loss of assets, have you seen that rise? Oh, absolutely. Um, New Jersey, in particular, has had kind of a um, rocky process with the foreclosure process. We did kind of have a freeze on things for a little while, and um, now we're starting to see that number increase again. Uh, what we call it in the office is the floodgates. So we're starting to see yeah. the, the numbers increase again, um, the amount of calls that we're getting in reference to foreclosure opening mm. up again, and unfortunately, uh, quite a few of those calls are coming from seniors. Mm. And is there a, a, a track that someone's on, you know, f red flags in terms of foreclosure issues? When somebody calls our agency, mm -hmm. the minute we find out that they are 30 days late with their mortgage payment, uh, they mm -hmm. are directed immediately to a housing counselor. Mm -hmm. So they may be calling about a completely different issue, but because housing is such a crucial component mm -hmm. of a budget and, of course, as we know, a huge necessity, uh, it is the thing that our agency focuses very heavily on. So they, the minute, like I said, they, that they are 30 days past due, they are sent right over to a housing counselor to at least begin the process of housing mm -hmm. counseling. And, and hopefully, as we talk a little bit more, Maureen will explain that to us. But I'm also thinking that this situation has presented a new vocabulary 
I mean, I was surprised when we were sort of planning the show. I mean, what what does negative equity mean? What does underwater mean? What I mean, what are the new terms that people need to understand? Well, negative equity, underwater, those terms all relate to the same problem and uh, many, many individuals in New Jersey are experiencing this problem and that essentially means that you currently owe more on your home than your home is worth. Uh, there's been such a sharp decline in real estate values mm -hmm. in the state of New Jersey that many people purchased their homes five, ten years ago. Uh, they may have put the, the 20 percent down that, oh, okay. that many mortgages ask yeah. for and now all of a sudden that property is worth considerably less than the balance of the, of the mortgage. And a short sale? What's a short sale? A short sale essentially is when a homeowner has the opportunity to sell their property for less than they actually owe on the property. The, with the current conditions um, in mm. the state of New Jersey, what has happened is, is that most people can't sell their properties for what they are they were worth in the market a few years ago so the mortgage companies are allowing them to actually sell the properties for less than than the balance on the mortgage mm -hmm. right. you know it's interesting when we were doing most of the elder index report and we were presenting it to people i was often asked why w would someone who's a senior still have a mortgage you know and it always kind of surprised me because you know these situations may have evolved because somebody wanted to help their children go to college so they took out a second mortgage or they may have needed a new furnace or the roof needed to be done and or they may have had a health um, catastrophe that affected their expenses and so I always find it, it it's there are so many reasons why somebody might be as we say underwater sure right. and so um, I'm just wondering um, Maureen Kim mentioned that maybe housing is not their first issue, but when someone contacts your agency, what other issues might present and how would you necessarily get to the housing issue? Um, some of them, what we're, what we're seeing is they, basic needs, I mean, they have the equity and then they take out a mortgage, like you said, for mm -hmm. college, mm -hmm. um, just to live off of because they don't have the income that they necessarily had previously. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing a lot of people are making a choice, do I pay for my medicine right. or do I pay my mortgage payment? And it's very frustrating. You know, it's they've paid their dues, they have worked, and now is the time for them to slow down and they turn to their home and they take the equity out and that is what they're using to live off of. But you know, and then it causes them to be underwater, um, and they end up sometimes having to short sale the property, depending on what their situation mm -hmm. is. And we, we go, we have a step-by-step -step process we take them through. We discuss the whole situation. We go through their budget. We give them resources. Is this on the phone or is it's this in over person? The phone. Over the phone. It's all over the phone. It um, mm -hmm. takes about like 40 minutes, but it's done over the phone. And we try to give them a clear picture of what is going on because sometimes they're not keeping track of their expenses. They don't know where the income is going, you know, as it's coming in, where it's going. So it just paints a nice clear picture mm. for them and we give them the resources and we put the power back in their hands and we help them also. You know, we send them to uh, senior centers in their area. We send them, um, you know, to various other resources that suit their needs once mm -hmm. we're finished. I'm just curious, when someone calls you, do you open up a case file? Is this somebody you yeah. follow? Is this, are there more than is there more than one call? I mean, how does um, what happens is they first call in after we go through the budget and everything. We give them their resources. There are some follow up calls. There are conference calls with their lenders um, because a lot of times they can't even get through and they're very frustrated and sometimes they're alone. Sometimes they've had a spouse that has passed mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. They just need help. They need someone to talk to. And, you know, there's free help out there, and they mm -hmm. need to know that there are people that they can talk to, and it's free. Mm -hmm. Now, when you mention being on the phone with their lenders, is that a foreclosure mediation, or is it, is it just a normal process? I mean, what is it? It's foreclosure prevention. It okay. entails, we, we're either talking about a modification to help them stay in the home, that's one option. Mm -hmm. There might be an option where they end up having to short sale their property or a deed in lieu instead of going through a foreclosure, which is, you know, the um, one thing we try to avoid because mm -hmm. doing a short sale on deed in lieu is just more proactive than going through deed the foreclosure. Deed in lieu. lieu. A foreclosure. So can you explain what deed yes. in lieu is? A deed in lieu is 
Um, there are steps. First, modification is to stay in the home and keep the home if they can afford a certain payment. Then there, the next step would be a short sale if that's not an option for them mm -hmm. or they can't go into a New Jersey Homekeeper uh, program. Then a short sale is when they sell the house for less than what is owed. The lender ends up um, taking a hit on the mortgage, mm -hmm. not the homeowner. Mm -hmm. And then the last step is a deed in lieu, and that's your exiting the property. They sometimes, you know, depending on your loan, they could give you relocation assistance, and you're handing the keys over to the property instead of them foreclosing on you. Oh, okay. You mentioned the New Jersey Homekeeper Program. Um, Kim, do you want to explain that or? New Jersey Homekeeper Program is a. Um, fairly newer program mm -hmm. in which um, homeowners that are past due on their mortgage that have experienced uh, disruption in employment um, and seniors alike can apply. Uh, they can go right through um, NJHMFA. New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance Agency. Correct. Okay. And. Um, they will assign them to a counselor where the counselor will take a look and see whether or not this person meets the criteria for this particular loan. Uh, it is a loan. Um, it is a loan mm -hmm. that if they stay in the property for a period of time does not need to be paid back. However, if they do leave the property prior to that point is paid back. Um, the amount that they would be granted is dependent upon their, their particular situation. Um, caps are, are between 36,000 and 40,000 I believe and is this for any age or is this for older workers or this is for any, any, age. any age this is any age unfortunately I think one of the things that we've seen is that there are very few age specific programs out there mm -hmm. um, which is very frustrating for um, us on the counseling side because seniors do come with their own set of financial issues mm -hmm. that um, unfortunately kind of puts them in the pool with, with everyone else mm -hmm. vying for the same bundle of money. Um, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, unfortunately with Homekeeper it is, it is for, for all ages. And I'm thinking when you say they're bundled in with other um, age cohorts, it just means they also have less assets to sort of pay back um, if that's part of the program. Yes, that's so, correct. Um, now the the counselors for the home keepers program are they part of Nova Debt or are they part of New Jersey Housing and Mortgage Finance? They are um, hey, part of Nova Debt for, for for our particular group. It's, they are Nova Debt counselors. They are mm -hmm. our housing counselors, and then um, they offer the counseling. They take the application and then is then submitted oh, to the right, state for approval. State. And um, how would someone find out about Nova Debt, or how would they reach you, or how would they find out about what basic services you could offer? We have a um, comprehensive website at novadebt.org uh, and uh, the telephone number would be our 1-800-99-BILLS uh, number. 99 bills? 99 bills. bills. You can't forget that. <laughs> 99 bills and that would get them immediately to a counselor. Okay, well that's very good to know. I was going to say, you know, we, we there are some age specific programs though when I think of reverse mortgages. Yes. You have to be, what, age 62? Correct. And um, are there other consider, I mean, you know, it's not a w one size fits all for reverse no. mortgage. So can you or Maureen explain the, the differences and which is, seems more beneficial or sure. is it just depending on the senior situation? A reverse mortgage is one of those products out there that is um, really really specific to particular situations. Mm -hmm. It is, like you said, it, this is not a um, one-size-fits-all kind of product. And the reason for that is, um, again, the age mm -hmm. of 62, the property has to be maintained um, to a certain level, taxes and insurance have to continue to be paid. The senior still does retain mm -hmm. title to the property mm -hmm. during this time. The other issue with a reverse mortgage is First of all, what a reverse mortgage essentially is is allowing someone to stay in their stay in their mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. borrow the equity that is in their home, but not have to pay it back while they are living in the home. Okay. okay. So what we see, probably the, the what we see most are people that are um, 
trying to survive on Social Security. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the $14,000 that they're receiving just isn't enough uh, right. to make ends meet, yeah. so they need that additional income. We see quite a bit with um, health care issues. Mm -hmm. They need that money, and um, this gives them the opportunity, again, to, to stay in their property and utilize that equity. So for that reason, um, there are definitely family issues that need to be addressed. What are your plans with the property, um, with your will? What, what, were, what mm -hmm. was your goal with mm -hmm. the property at end of life? Right. Um, other questions um, that come about are, is it worth the expense of the mortgage? A reverse mortgage can be a very expensive right. loan product. Well, that's very closing interesting. Costs. The closing yeah. costs? That's correct. And is there like a deed review and all those normal things with a closing? The, the, Average reverse mortgage cost that I see um, tends to range between ten and fifteen thousand dollars, which wow, is considerably higher than what we call a forward mortgage, which is your regular, straightforward kind of mortgage. Hmm. So it can be a very expensive loan product to hmm. take. However, if you're in a situation where you need that equity and it's going to um, get you to the place you need to be, that may be well worth it. Oftentimes those fees are rolled right into the loan. Mm -hmm. um, there are different types of reverse mortgage products. There is your standard adjustable rate, which is the one that, that we see most, uh, most often, and, and that is where the interest rate is going to fluctuate. Does that mean that the senior has the ability to um, extract or have better benefits or does it mean that it's how does it change when you say fluctuate sure. how does it with, an, with the adjustable rate mortgage mm -hmm. um, with the reverse mortgage it can the interest rate can fluctuate monthly or mm -hmm. annually mm -hmm. um, the most cost beneficial to the senior tends to be the monthly adjustment. The interest rate tends to be lower. And that's going to be what that interest rate is going to be is the interest that's going to be paid back at the time the loan becomes due and payable. Okay. There are many different options for uh, ways to receive your funds through a reverse mortgage. Uh, you can take it all in one lump sum, which is usually mm -hmm. the way if somebody is looking to pay off an existing mortgage is how it would be done. Um, mm -hmm. They can take Get, um, monthly payments. They can take. Um, they can take it in a line of credit, which okay. is, um, quite frankly, I think one of the better ways to take it because while that money is sitting in an account, it is making money. Right. So um, there. In in the last few years, the reverse mortgage product with a fixed interest rate has come out. Mm -hmm. And um, this mortgage basically means that the interest is not going to change. It is going to stay the same throughout the life of the loan, mm -hmm. which for a lot of people sounds like a good thing because we've seen interest rates do some pretty strange things. True. The downside to that is that a lot of the banks that are involved will not allow the credit line options and require that the money be paid out in one lump sum. Mm -hmm. oh. So um, that essentially means that interest is being charged on that money, that full amount, the minute the loan is signed. So uh, it's definitely something that the homeowner mm -hmm. needs to review. My favorite part of the reverse mortgage is that a there is a requirement to sit down with a certified reverse mortgage counselor. Like Maureen. Like Maureen. Right. A third party <laughs> who is n right. does not have any right. financial benefit from this loan and um, basically what that counselor is going to do is explain all the nuts and bolts of this loan, break down every cost, break down all of the options mm -hmm. and while the counselor is not going to tell the homeowner what to do, the homeowner will leave the counseling session with a much better idea mm -hmm. of what is in their best interest. Yes, it sounds like there's an awful lot to go into it, not only knowing right. what a housing counselor is going to tell you, but what your goals are, Absolutely. as well as what your, your family situation might be. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've done other programs on um, other legal instruments that someone should have, but this just sounds, and, and we also talk about having family engaged in that. This just does sound like another situation where you really need to talk the options out. Absolutely, right. and um, when meeting with a housing counselor, mm -hmm. we strongly encourage the family to participate in the counseling session. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, if, if you have children that are involved in your decision making, they are absolutely um, welcome to come along, sit down, hear 
all the ins and outs mm -hmm. so that the whole family can make the best decision. Mm -hmm. right. Are there special programs for veterans? I'm just curious. There is a service members website that we do refer veterans to mm -hmm. if they need help because some of them are, you know, current service members sometimes right. uh, we do have resources for them. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a veterans website that we do uh, recommend them mm -hmm. to go to if they need, if they need that mm -hmm. based on what they need. Right. But there's not a special um, reverse mortgage program for veterans or anything so mm -hmm. I just wondered. Okay. No, not no. that I'm aware of. No. Okay. I thought it was interesting in, in looking up reverse mortgages that someone is still required to pay their property taxes yes. and to have homeowners insurance. Absolutely. Right. And if you don't maintain either of those things, is your reverse mortgage at risk? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That they What they say is that loan be, can become due and payable, which means the bank can say, we want you need right. to pay us that money back really? today. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. Now, I, you also provide services for um, renters. I mean, I know we've been really focusing on homeowners, but um, if someone has a credit and debt issue outside of being a homeowner, Nova Debt still addresses their needs too. Yes, right, we have so credit counseling mm -hmm. um, they can come to. Uh, we have bankruptcy counseling. We have all different types of counseling that can. So no matter what your situation is, mm -hmm. um, you can benefit from talking to any kind of counselor at Nova Debt. Um, which can just help you whether you're a renter or homeowner, mm -hmm. reverse mortgages, mm -hmm. anything you need. It's, there's free help out there for everyone. Can you think of a, of a client that really presented a, a challenging issue but you know you were able to help them make some decisions about um, how best to address their um, debt issues? There are, you know, there are. Um, there have been times where people have called in mm -hmm. and maybe there isn't really a mortgage issue maybe it's another area right. and it's a matter of the light bulb going off and them saying wow you know what you're really right I never looked at it this way and you just give a different perspective because you're mm -hmm. an outside party mm -hmm. you're outside looking in and you're just telling them what their options are and they, they really see it once you go through the numbers mm -hmm. and you, so you send them the numbers and they call back and they'll discuss it with you mm -hmm. um, but there are you know quite a few clients that we've helped as far as you know, you know, modification or whatever mm -hmm. they need. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the person who didn't realize that their um, credit card issues were really sapping right. their their mm -hmm. monthly expenses. Right. And, and sometimes they're using their they're paying their mortgage with their credit cards or their mm -hmm. their medicine, and mm -hmm. they don't realize it. And then you tell them, you know, you have so much credit. This is where your problem lies. You really need to talk to a credit card counselor. Exactly, and um, and I don't know that credit cards modify their rates when you call. Mm, not Pardon? not like the mortgage companies. Not like too. the mortgage no. companies. <laughs> no. So, and you know, a payment plan. I guess there's automatically a payment plan with a credit card if you're not paying the the monthly balance, but at the same time, you're also building up more more interest. I would presume. Absolutely, right. and late fees and right. and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what we typically see is that, uh, especially with credit card debt. Mm -hmm. The, the biggest problem that we see is that people just don't know exactly where their money is going every month. We, we take it for granted that mm -hmm. we know where, we, we know we pay our electric bill, we know we right. pay our water bill, but what we sometimes miss are some of those little things. And um, we typically uncover different financial sinkholes, essentially, mm -hmm. where money is going, people don't even realize, and, yeah. and it manifests itself as credit card debt. Yeah. We also have across New Jersey and many counties a money management system, a money management program that will help them um, see what their bills are, as you just said, you know, help them identify where uh, their money's going and, and actually help them, you know, pull out the bills and, you know, deal with check writing but not write, not sign the checks for them. And so um, we often refer people um, to services like that and I think it kind of complements what you're doing right. because yes. you don't do the check writing portion. No. no, but we would be happy to sit down and, and go through a budget right. Um, right. line by line, but mm -hmm. uh, for check writing, no, unfortunately yeah. not. So if you really wanted people to, to understand the help that they could get from Nova Debt and um, the typical client and the typical outcomes, what, what would you say, Kim? I would say, I mean, our, our typical client is probably middle class, mm -hmm. um, income probably ranging from, you know, forty to seventy thousand dollars a year. Not what mm -hmm. you would think as as being a fi financially strapped. Um, they are people that want to pay their bills. 
Right. They desperately yep. want to pay their bills. Perhaps they're just not financially educated. Um, this wasn't something we taught in school mm, 20 right. years ago or 30 years ago. Or they've experienced the downturn. They Absolutely. may have found themselves not fully employed. Yes. So I imagine you see individuals like that too. Without question. Mm -hmm. And um, they're confused, they're frightened. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, sometimes the collection measures that are taking place are not always uh, the nicest, right. so they're scared. And what our focus is, is to educate, to, to let these people know what their rights are, mm -hmm. to, to educate them on how to handle these situations, to empower them to take care of what they need to do mm -hmm. and give them the guidance they need to do it. Well, I think that is definitely a, um, a good sign. And um, as you said, um, I didn't even think of the collection person calling them. I guess sometimes that's right. a trigger. Do you hear from them, Maureen, when someone yes. calls and says? Yes, and they're frightened because they're, the collection agencies are trained to call them and, you know, let's say scare them and mm -hmm. they get very nervous and right. they don't know what to do and they call us and mm -hmm. we try to help them get through it. And so again we will be sure and post your numbers at the end of the show um, because I think people should be able to um, know about Nova Dead and the services they can get as well as your website. So thank I'd you. like to th thank you both for thank coming. You. Thank you. It's been very helpful for you to share your time with us and your information. Um, we want to remind our viewers if they want to find about out about senior services in their area, including the money management program that I mentioned, that they could contact their county offices on aging or their dis aging and disability resource connection in their county. Um, and you'll see a listing of those numbers on our website, or you can call the state hotline number, which is 1-877-222-3737. And we appreciate you joining us for this edition of Aging Insights. And of course, we like to ask our viewers if you have any suggestions for future program topics to please contact us. And you can reach us at our phone number, which is 609-421-0206. Or you can contact us via email at office at njfoundationforaging.org. Thank you again. And until next time, take care. And remember, aging is everyone's business.